So nothing's gonna eat us. They'll just trample us if they do find us. Under those large eyes are two fangs. And for a long time, the world did not know that Boomslang can kill people. This is the coolest reptile ever. There are no such things as other cool reptiles, just chameleons. And what's cool about Breviceps is that they're totally terrestrial frogs. They don't lay their eggs in water. So everybody uh, proceeds to these guys to be poisonous, but you can clearly see I'm handling it. I will go to the extremes to show you that these guys are not as poisonous as they think. I will leak it for you. Interestingly, these guys breed close to fans, uh, small water bodies, uh, just outside the water body. Um, there's actually a couple of species of these, undescribed still. Um, and uh, it looks like the southern African ones um, are a different one than the, the one that the name really goes with. So that's kind of interesting. So despite a lot of people say about hippos being the biggest killer in Africa, crocodiles kill a lot more people. So this one was recently added to the diversity that we buy from Sinonomy. So I find them snazzy little animals. Uh, if you get more than four or five, you're going to have a really good fondue. <laughs> So we're at a petrol station in Slui and we've managed to corner Louis de Priest, the man who wrote the frog book for South Africa. He's going to tell us about his little frogs here. Okay, so we just trained and a uh, number of frogs out on the road. Among these, this little guy, this is one of the shovel nose frogs, Hemisus momorodus. And this guy is, uh, has got the callus on the nose. So unlike the rain frogs that, and toads and others that, that burrow backwards, this guy dives head first into the soil. And, and with that nose, they push the soil out of the way. Now, interestingly, these guys breed close to fans, uh, small water bodies, uh, just outside the water body. Uh, they lay their eggs in a little depression and recently um, uh, one, of, one of our colleagues discovered how these guys carry their tadpoles then back to the water. Uh, it's also believed that they may wiggle in some uh, circumstances but we now have evidence that they, that they carry their tadpoles as well. Okay, and so this guy has got uh, usually a bright yellow here along the mouth and on the heels they've got digging tubercles or little spades there that helps them go dig into the soil. Oops, yeah, here we are again. Okay, cool. So we are on the last day of HAA 2017 and on the right of me is the ASI station, African Snake and Bite Institute. And this is Ashley Kemp, um, Luke's sister. And Luke's pretty sister. <laughs> Sometimes, and she um, does the admin, and she knows quite a lot about snakes and snake bite now because of it. And she's currently putting on a pressure bandage, and this kind of pressure bandage is the kind of bandage you would put on a uh, neurotoxic bite. So Cape Cobra, Black Mamba, you want to buy yourself some time. But um, what's very important about these is that you get the right amount of pressure. Um, yeah, and you have to get between how much of this? It's 50 to 70 mercury on a blood pressure monitor. Okay. Which you can't really do if you you bandage with a crepe bandage. Yeah. So you say generally you say you bandage as tight as you would for a sprained ankle. Yeah. And when we teach that in the advanced courses, people can't do it. They either bandage too tight or too loose. It doesn't work. And these bandage perfectly at sixty. Because you because try to make a square. Yeah. Right? So you stretch your rectangle into a square, and that puts a pressure on your lymphatic system. So it doesn't stop your lymphatic system. It just puts pressure on. Yeah. And um, that slows down the spread of venom. It doesn't stop but it slows it down and it buys you time. And this is because venom tr is transferred in the lymphatic system, not the blood system that, that was used to be thought in the past. Yeah, so you still get um, circulation through to your hand. You're not cutting off your circulation, so it's not like a tourniquet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're putting a bit of pressure on there just to buy you a bit of time. Yeah. So you should definitely go to the hospital afterwards, but the, if you are in the field of black mamba bite, cape cobra bite, this could probably really buy you some time, maybe save your life. Cool, thanks Ashley. Pleasure. Take this and don't kill my arm. <laughs> so this is uh, Vanna Conradi, he's the curator at Beowulf in PE, the museum. And uh, we've been lucky enough to spend the last two weeks with him. We did the survey before the HAA, and then we came through here to Bonamanzi. So he's going to tell us a bit about himself and then some critics he's got. So yeah, I look already introduced me. I'm the curator of herpetology. So 
sometimes call me Mini Bill. Um, <laughs> and what we got here in Bonamans here is a little rubber frog. Um, so everybody uh, proceeds to these guys to be poisonous, but you can clearly see I'm handling it. I will go to the extremes to show you that these guys are not as poisonous as they think. I will lick it for you. <laughs> Just slimy. There's no, no poison in there. So if I'm not here uh, in a few days, then we know. <laughs> cool. So this is the last day of uh, the HAA. It's uh, finally finished and uh, we came here to have a bit of fun, but we had to make these uh, little presentations on some of the herpetological work we were contributing to South African herpetology. Yeah. So uh, Chad here did his work on. Oh, that was a nice little yeah, right That was just, just straight in there. Woo! Yeah. Tell me what you did. Okay, I did my own genetic structuring of the spotted grass snake. So basically, I did a, a, a southern phylogeny. So you can see here, I did a southern phylogeny of phylax from the artist. So the spotted scarf circuit to see where they genetically lie. And next year, or this year and the next year, I'm doing my masters on them. So I'm making it much bigger. And I'm including all the other species in the genus. Luke, what did you do? So I just, I just had a basic uh, selection of data from Grahamstown. Uh, 237 snakes I collected in three years based on 24 species of the 31 historical records for Grahamstown. And I just mapped them out where in Grahamstown I collected them, species composition, and then compared them to three other university towns uh, in, this, in the Southern Cape and up in Pretoria. Um, yeah, so we contributed, we had questions here, watched a whole bunch of talks. It was really great. Yeah, it was four days of uh, HAA, our first one. First HAA, one. HAA 2017, but uh, hopefully you come back. We've got some really cool videos um, of everyone else so it should be very cool and yeah we did post it the next time we'll come back we're going to present talks <laughs> hello today we are here with some of the greats in african herpetology um we've got professor aaron bauer and professor Paul. um yeah i've got a, a house gecko here a tropical house gecko hemidactylus mabuya and uh these guys are widespread across Africa, um, and they invaded into parts of, of South Africa, native on the Indian Ocean coast part the way down, but when you get out of the tropics down like in PE, where Bill is from, you have introduced ones. They're also introduced in, in the U.S., and they're introduced in other parts of the world. Um, there's actually a couple of species of these, undescribed still, um, and uh, it looks like the Southern African ones um, are a different one than the, the one that the name really goes with, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, and uh, I think people are, are uh, take them for granted, because you could live in this part of KZN, you'll see them all the place, all over the place. Um, I was quite pleased the other day because I spoke to some of the staff who were sure that they were poisonous, so I was able to assure them that they're perfectly harmless to handle. I used to study tortoises much more than I do now. Uh, I did some ecological stuff on Chosain. But just recently I've been working with Uwe Fritz to try and resolve some of the, the kind of taxonomy of African Chelonians. Uh, and this is quite a nice example because this is a hingeback which was previously considered to be uh, Peliana, but uh, an old name that John Hewitt, who used to be the uh, director at Albany Museum, just close to where I live in Port Elizabeth, showed that this was a separate species Zombensis, and we managed to validate it and to revive its status. So this is a juvenile, and uh, you can't see it's not even sexually mature yet, uh, it's a very big tick, which is a problem that all tortoises have. Uh, but then also the hinge is just beginning to develop. You can't see it as good as normally, but this is the only Chelonian in the world where this part of the shell is hinged and will close off and protect the hind legs. So there were, South Africa's got the richest Chelonian diversity, or not Chelonian diversity, but tortoise diversity in the world. Uh, and it was nice that this one was recently added to the diversity and revived from synonymy. So I find them snazzy little animals. Uh, if you get more than four or five, you can have a really good fondue. <laughs>
So, today is second day of HAA, 2017. Oh, sorry, what is it? It's the first day. It's the first day. But we've been here for two days. We've been for two days. Um, we just finished taking pictures of the marble tree snake, and we've been looking in the book. And Luke, what is what? What do short-legged steps eat? What's that? The Tetradactyla steps. Yes. I think they eat bees. 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 Bees.